Welcome back to another episode of The Review hosted here on the Alaska Landmine. I'm your host, Kale Green, and today we're going to break down the unfolding drama that has gripped nearly every conversation in the state since Friday. I'm talking about a story that's equal part Charlotte Green, Mel Gibson, and Anthony Weiner. Today, we're talking about the now very public aftermath of an alleged relationship, the full extent of which we are still unsure of, between Ethan Berkowitz and Maria Athens. In Maria Athens' unsubstantiated accusation that Ethan posted nude photos of himself to an underage girl's website, all of which led to the mayor's resignation at yesterday's assembly meeting. Let's get right into it and unpack this story before anything else changes. Welcome to The Review. Before we can talk about any of this, we're going to have to lay out a timeline based on publicly available information today because there's a lot to get into here. This all started on Friday when journalist Maria Athens posted a video from her official Facebook page that quickly went Alaska viral within minutes in which she accused Ethan Berkowitz of exposing his genitalia on an underage girl's website, whatever that means, and she would be revealing the story and photos on the news at 9 p.m. Hello there, Maria Athens from Fox ABC CW News at National Alaska. Breaking news, according to reliable sources, Anchorage Mayor Ethan Berkowitz has his male genitalia posted on an underage girl's website. Coming up tonight, Fox 4 News at 9, ABC News at 10, CW News at 12.30, and Newsnet National for sure will cover this. You heard it here first. Within seconds, people on the right and left started attacking and defending Ethan. Some people on the right, who were fed up with Ethan's politics, were happy to label him a pedophile without any evidence or due process. And people on the left came out proclaiming Ethan as a virtuous public servant being slandered by an unhinged right-winger. This online craziness on social media apparently prompted Athens to escalate the situation by posting a bizarre photo, a selfie of a naked person's backside. The person in the photo looked like it could be Ethan, but it also looked like a random photo sent to a dermatologist to identify a rash. It was clear we just didn't have enough proof to say whether that was or was not Ethan. The mayor's team sent out a press release calling Maria Athens hostile and unwell. It categorically denied Athens' claim and said they talked with her station's manager, Scott Centers, who emphatically disavowed his employees' comments. Back in the real world, Maria Athens got into a fist fight with the station manager, Scott Centers, who, according to court documents, she was in a relationship with. Something, 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 Athens gets arrested. The details of the arrest are disputed, but what's not disputed, she got charged with misdemeanor assault, criminal mischief, and disorderly conduct, and eventually got brought to Highland Mountain Correctional Center for a weekend away from home. During this period of time, over the weekend, pretty much everyone following Alaska politics went ballistic as people scrambled to figure out what the hell was going on. One of the strangest, and yet might be the best working theory we have with what we know so far to understand this thing, have you heard the story about the alcohol-infused cookie shop owner who's related to Andy Kreiner and whose daughter supposedly worked as a non-sexual escort? Well, buckle up. I want to be clear that while this is the best theory we've got so far, it's just a theory. And much of this has not been verified. I digress. The story goes like this. There's a mom and a daughter. The daughter claims that years ago she was working as a non-sexual escort. Her mom found out and was angry about it. When pressed, the daughter told the mom that one of her favorite clients worked for the state and that he was a short man. The mom apparently understood that as, my daughter has been involved with Ethan Berkowitz. According to the daughter, mom likes to fabricate things for attention. As an interesting aside, I should probably mention the daughter also claimed that her mom, cookie shop owner, didn't like Ethan. Now, the question has to be asked, how is this in any way connected to our story? Well, Athens was doing a story with the mom on Friday about her cookie business. Athens also harbors ill will toward Ethan. When Athens was expressing those feelings to mom, at some point, the mom told Maria that Ethan had been involved with her young escort daughter a couple of years ago. I was calling to tell you that I told the police that it wasn't him. I don't know what more to say. No one knows anything about us being involved in any way. Yes, what I told her triggered her. Yes, I apologize to you. I will apologize to whoever I need to apologize to, but that's on me and I don't need you to tell me what to do. I'm a full grown adult and I can handle my responsibilities. I did not make it up on purpose. I didn't even make it up. You told me that, and I just added one and one together, and I made an assumption that was wrong. According to texts and a voicemail between the mom and daughter, that's the origin of part of this story. We'll come back to this later. 
Flash to Monday. All the blogs were posting speculations, the ADN was largely silent, and KTUU, or Alaska's news source, had really only done a story about Athens' arrest. As rumor had it, they didn't post the video of Athens from Friday or talk about it because they were afraid of potential litigation and being legally liable for spreading slander. But Monday, despite the seeming lack of investigation from larger news organizations, the story spun up all on its own again. See, Monday is when Maria Athens would be leaving the Highland Correctional Facility. Maria had been there since Friday evening. I heard that she got out sometime around late Monday afternoon. Around the same time, a second press release came out from the mayor's office in which Ethan issues the following statement. I apologize to the people of Anchorage for a major lapse in judgment I made several years ago. Yada, yada, yada. I had a consensual, inappropriate messaging relationship with reporter Maria Athens. Yada, yada and a joint investigation into the recent allegations made by Miss Athens was completed by the Anchorage Police Department and FBI and found no evidence of criminal misconduct. The Assembly also put out a press release stating that Ethan had an inappropriate relationship with Athens. Unlike Ethan's statement, however, theirs did not specify that it was only a messaging relationship. Okay, so that was a bombshell. Cue the speculation up on social media with a new fervor. That news released on 4.29 p.m. Monday killed one narrative and started another. Suddenly, all the major news outlets had permission to write up a story. And they did. But like an episode of Lost, this revelation simply answered one question with many new ones. And then, Monday night, a voicemail that was heard around the world was linked to the Alaska landmine. It goes something like this. Warning, the contents of this are explicit. Ethan, it's Maria Athens from Fox ABC, CW, News Net, National Alaska. Uh, I just learned through my uh, uh, Emmy award-winning journalism, you are also a pedophile in, like, little girls and children. And there's a website. I'm so fucking exposing you. I'm going to get an Emmy. So you either turn yourself in, kill yourself, or do what you need to do. I will personally kill you and Mara Kimmel, my goddamn self, you Jewish piece of living fucking shit. You have met your match, motherfucker. You have met your motherfucking match. I can't believe I am such a good person and thought I loved you. I fucking hate, I don't even hate you. I will pray for your Zionist fucking ass, you piece of shit loser. And I'm putting this on the news tonight. Bye. Have a great Friday, you motherfucker. Now, that wasn't full Mel Gibson, but it wasn't far off either. Then it was yesterday, which felt eerie and silent. And then all at once, that was broken with a bang. On Tuesday night, Mayor Berkowitz resigned at the assembly meeting through a surrogate, his chief of staff, Jason Bockenstock. And that brings us to now. I think many people are familiar with Mayor Ethan Berkowitz, elected in 2015 for a three-year term and re-elected in 2018. Up until the beginning of COVID, it was widely speculated that Ethan might run for governor in 2022. His approval ratings took a hit during COVID because of his handling of the pandemic, including some of the stink that got on him while the assembly was trying to use COVID relief money to purchase buildings in an attempt to address homelessness. But he was still on people's minds when talking about a potential contender capable of challenging Dunleavy. Emphasis now on was. Those talks are done for now. This would be a hard hill to climb over for even the most adept of politicians. I cannot imagine a likely scenario in which Ethan will hold elected office for many years to come. And for everyone who never heard of the other character in our story, this is Maureen Maria Athens. Based on her online resume, she's been working as a B-list reporter for five years in Anchorage. According to that same document, she had previously worked at the New Greek TV in New York and other prestigious journalistic agencies such as Neo Magazine. What we do know about her city's Tannist anti-Semite based on her social media postings and interviews is that it seems that she was becoming less of a journalist and more of a conservative pundit or activist. It's okay to have a slant in your reporting, everyone does, but at some point I think it could be argued she crossed that line maybe even before the recent situation with the mayor. What's been so fascinating to me is the way people's different biases have led them to speculate in totally different ways about this story. On Friday, when this video came out, half of what I'd been hearing from folks online was what they believed that Athens source were the voices in her own head. That this woman was crazy and that there's nothing that she had on Ethan and that the slander case Ethan would launch against her would allow him to own the station she previously would have worked for. That Ethan could do no wrong they assume before considering any evidence that Ethan hadn't done anything wrong. Because Ethan is smart, he's a good person, he has a great family, he's on their team. But history has shown us that even smart, 
good people from good families can harbor secrets and do terrible things. If he weren't smart, if he didn't have a good family, would those things have made the accusation more likely or true? While the burden of proof was clearly on Athens, reflexively defending people for bad reasons is a dangerous game. In hindsight, some of the statements put out by left-leaning politicians defending Ethan look hasty and short-sighted and have not aged well. On the other hand, there were folks who were so mad at Ethan's policy, mad at his handling of COVID, that they were ready to condemn him of pedophilia with no evidence, zero proof. They wanted him gone and the way he got out hardly mattered to them. But if I'm being honest, the latter, the folks who are ready to castrate without proof, that felt more troubling than the first. And it should to all of us. It's a nasty type of cancel culture that I wish wasn't so prevalent in our society. The immediate gratification of the internet has created a system where the comment section of a post can be the judge, jury, and executioner over people's lives. Without needing proof, you can falsely accuse a sitting mayor of being a pedophile, and you'll get cheers from a large portion of the room. That should be a little frightening to all of us, because at any time, it could happen to you. But it also brings us to another point. What do we actually know right now, and what just doesn't seem to pass the smell test? Athens accused Mayor Berkowitz of posting naked photos of his genitals on an underage girl's website. According to the FBI and APD, they were not currently able to obtain any evidence that that was true. So that one is likely false. Personally, I don't believe that Ethan would do anything like that. Given that there's no evidence for these crimes, there's no reason to believe that they're true. I need to see some real hard evidence before I'd believe anything like that. Sorry about the pun. The unsubstantiated accusations so far have had no backing. Even if Athens released a new photo of Ethan, it doesn't necessarily prove anything either. She could have been sent a dick pic in an Anthony Weiner-esque move, or maybe somebody just digitally altered an image or a video. That's not difficult to do. Here's what I can do in 10 minutes from my phone. These things require real investigators. How could you prove that a person posted on a website if you don't know how to track their IP address or that an image wasn't photoshopped or altered? I have doubts that Maria Athens even had access to the type of investigative team needed to substantiate the claim that she was attempting to make. Another thread? According to a young, Alaskan-raised, Portlandian-based escort, the story originated from her mother. That's probably best outlined by this audio obtained by the Alaska landmine. She picked up the phone at the place in the studio and called the mayor right in front of me and started screaming at him, calling him a pedophile. And she threatened his life, said she was going to kill him and his wife and um, was just like a, a maniac. And it was scary. And she hung up the phone and I said, I didn't say my daughter was underage. I said she was she's over 18 and there was no pictures involved or anything. Why you're like, what are you saying? And she goes, oh, it doesn't matter. I have thousands of pictures of him. I'll just make my own website and, and say it was him. And I said, I want no part of this. I'm, you know, this is not at all what I signed up for here. Like, just get me out of here. And um, it that's when this, you know, her complete spiral started happening. Something interesting to note that I didn't cover before, Cookie Mom told the daughter and a friend that she was very concerned about the supposed deal with Nestle Toll House, so she didn't want to go out on a limb to defend Ethan earlier because it might jeopardize the deal. Whew. Which is not definitive by any means, but it's the best theory right now that explains it. But it doesn't explain everything. Based on what we understand now, it seems to be the most plausible. And yet another, why did Ethan admit his relationship with Maria on Friday? When he released his press release, the mayor's comms director told the press that it was so he could tell his family. But I can tell you how long it would take me to tell my family. <laughs> Honey, uh, you might want to sit down. I messed up bad, and I gotta come clean. If I don't tell you now, it'll be worse later. At this point, the city's trust in Ethan is certainly damaged, and the trust in Athens' journalism might be broken beyond repair after the release of that voicemail. And yet the story isn't done. Before yesterday, people had been talking about Ethan needing to resign, but in all fairness, there was a loud minority who was talking about that before Athens' accusation too. As to the relationship between Berkowitz and Athens, we may find ourselves in a he said, she said with two unreliable narrators, which means this may drag on for a while. Listen, this is an evolving story. 
The decision to resign brings up more questions about what actually happened than it answered, and there are a lot of moving parts in this saga. I hope that, for those who have been unaware before, this has been a good crash course on the last few days, and we'll know more soon. I saw on Twitter that great reporters like Kyle Hopkins had already filed for public records requests, and I'm sure people are on it. Also, in case you missed it, our own Jeff Landfield was the source of many developments in this story. The landmine is a lot of people working a little and Jeff working a lot to bring you important content. As always, if you like the landmine and the content that's been coming out, now's a great time to go ahead and donate. Thanks so much for joining us on another episode of The Review. I'm your host, Kale Green. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs>